Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. It's the show, it's pretty low, so low actually. It's so low that in fact there is no budget. And when that budget comes, it will still be the low budget show because I will use that budget falsely to buy products for myself. I just got the NECA Goliath figure from Gargoyles, and holy fuck is it awesome. <laughs> it was a really good figure. So, we're back. Oh man, getting closer to Christmas, which means a Christmas episode, maybe? I don't know, I'm thinking about a Christmas episode. Don't know what I'd say though, which version of Santa would win in a fight? Well, the Jack Frost movie? Was he in a Jack Frost movie? I don't know. <laughs> the, the Alec Baldwin one from Rise of the Guardians would probably win because he looks like a badass. There's that episode, <laughs> but um, yeah, for some reason, I was like, you know what's a good franchise is the Angry Bird movie movies. They're actually really funny and good, and they're based on an app, so I'm like, well, let's take other apps of that generation and make them into movie franchises, because that's what I do here. I waste time and make things like that. But we also have a couple pieces of news, including a big one that I know some people are probably going to want to hear my thoughts on, so we'll start by jumping into that. The Spider-Man No Way Home trailer Uno Duo, that's one, two, I just said. Trailer two for Spider-Man No Way Home, a movie I couldn't give two shits about, and I'm not excited for in any way. It's here, we got a trailer for it. It offered nothing and everything, it looked good, it looked bad, it was great, it was poor. I don't know, man. Like, it's just so easy. I think it's easy. I think what they're doing is not special. It's obvious. It's pretentious. It's every th reason I didn't go see Ghostbusters Afterlife. Because I'm just like, we're going to tell our story. But then halfway through telling our story, we're going to do the nostalgia for you. And then it's going to stop being this impressive piece of fiction and start being, uh, oh, look at what we're doing that's going to make you take our bottom dollar. Look, I'm I'm fine with Alfred Molina reprising his role as Otto. Nobody else can do that role like him. Same with Willem Dafoe. I guess same with Jamie Foxx. I just, is it necessary? I think that, I think that it's just, we've passed time on all those things to be interesting that moving forward with our own multiverse that's not connected to our old movies is better. And I hate the excuse that this is a multiverse and these scenes can exist in there because it just means we're not moving forward as a franchise. We're just relying on old quips and jokes. It's, it's like in Zoolander 2 when they just made the same jokes in the first Zoolander. You're not offering me anything new. If I wanted that, I'd just go watch the old Zoolander. It's the same thing as the Spider-Man film. Sure, you have Alfred Molina back, but he already had his story told in the first movie he was in. So bringing him back, even if it is a different multiversal version, which I fucking hope so. My one hope for this film is that every single villain we see in it is not from a universe that we've already seen on screen. I hope it's the same actor, and they're from a different universe. That's all I want. I don't need to see the Amazing Spider-Man's Lizard return. I don't need to see Spider-Man 3's Sandman return. All I need to see is those characters, not the actor reprising their role from a movie that's 20 years old. I don't care. That's not special or fun. It just... I don't care. <clears throat> Nothing about that. And it, 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 I... It, I'm just tired. I cannot wait to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home on this channel. Because I think it's going to be a fun conversation I'm going to have with somebody. Speaking of conversation with somebody coming this week, hopefully, if this video comes out in the week it's recorded, uh, Hawkeye reviews are going to be starting with my friend and my cousin, Zach. And we're going to be talking about all of the episodes, which hopefully, if things go well, we'll be talking about No Way Home too. So, I don't want to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home right now. Let's talk about something that actually looked good. That is the first trailer for Pam and Tommy. What is Pam and Tommy? Well, it is this show about Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee and how their sex tape gets released and spread like wildfire on a lot of different platforms. Lily James, Sebastian Stan, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen. And my goodness, was this trailer fun. 
it looks silly. I thought I was going to go for a tone of like a Ryan Murphy thing, but it looks like it's going to be very funny and self-aware and just be like this weird shit show of people struggling to get their stuff together. That's all you could ask for with these people. It doesn't have to be comprehensive. It doesn't have to make sense. Just a bunch of random bullshit flinging its way into nonsense. I can't get over Sebastian Stanis, Tommy. He, he nailed it. He looks the part, but Lily James is Pamela. My goodness. It's just gorgeous. Just funny amazing i love it that poor woman has been through so much and i I just i cannot wait to see how awkward and insane this show is going to be seth rogan looks incredible talk about a transformation on that guy just going from what he's played before in like the early 2000s to who he's become now you aged like fine wine my friend unreal it's incredible to see what that guy did unreal i loved it as in Pam and Tommy just looks incredible. It looks so fun. I am just super pumped for this show. It comes February. I cannot wait to see what this brings. And speaking of seeing what things brings, we also got our official confirmation on another Martin Scorsese pick. He will be directing a Grateful Dead biopic with Jonah Hill starring as Jerry Garcia. This is fascinating to me, mainly because I... I don't know if I would have thought Jonah Hill. I get it. I do. Now that you say it, I'm like, okay, that's a creative choice. But I'm surprised. (laughs) And I mean this. I'm just amazed. Scorsese's like, yeah, Grateful Dead. Really? That's your thing, dude? Like, that's the that's the band for you? You you just seem like, you know, Sinatra. (laughs) But okay. Okay. I'll see anything you do, man, just because I think you are a genuinely talented creator, and I guess you are old enough to know what the Grateful Dead is like, so I don't know. You know, speak, Speaking of this, too, I do want to bring this up. It means nothing, but Ridley Scott, literally, the, the day I'm recording this, he was just like, kids today always on their damn phones. So they don't got time for my movies because they're all so millennial and, and boring. He's talking about The Last Duel, you know, that three-hour movie about a woman being raped like fuck you dude like if you want me to lose respect for you blame young people for your bullshit nobody wants to spend that long watching a stupid movie about a woman being raped and how she may or may not be betraying her husband fuck off you're not special ridley scott you've literally lost the right to complain you're 83 years old you are out of touch you are officially Don't have your finger on the pulse of this generation. Quit being mad they're not seeing your movies and that it's bombing. Edgar Wright is of this generation and Last Night in Soho is doing shit. You're not special. Fuck you, Ridley Scott. I'm going to go see House of Gucci, but not because of you, asshole. (laughs) That that stuff makes me mad. It's just like... And, and everybody's asking these fucking directors about why they don't like or they do like superhero movies. Quit asking them. They don't matter. You're asking people who are 70 and 80 if they like something designed for 12-year-olds. Fuck off. They don't care. Why would they? They don't matter. Nobody... I don't care about fucking Martin Scorsese's opinion on a movie that's made billions of dollars. He made Goodfellas. He's earned the right to bitch, but it's not going to change the fact that they're good movies or that they're made for a certain audience. Just shut up. Quit asking these people about shit. Okay? Jerry Garcia movie. (laughs) Just just make it. I don't care anymore. Oh... (laughs) Now, final piece of news before I completely lose my mind at old people directing. Delroy Lindo, an incredible actor from The Five Bloods. He was just in The Harder They Fall. He's fucking great. I love him. He is cast in Blade, the new Blade movie with Mahershala Ali. Who is he going to play? I don't know. A lot of people are like, oh, Whistler, obviously. Yeah, I could see it. But I'll say this. We don't have an official confirmation on Dracula. And I think he'd be a fucking awesome Dracula. (laughs) That would be... Imagine if Marvel's Dracula was Delroy Lindo. That would just be great. You could... Literally the same type of gothic horror freak from the 70s, but it's Delroy Lindo. That would be amazing to see. I would die to see that and experience that film and that idea just thrown out there. My goodness, would that be cool and fun. Just amazing. 
And that is all the news we have. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I guess we'll be talking about, you know, games on your iPhone from like, you know, 10 years ago. You got any games on your phone? You will after this because they're going to be a movie. Yeah, boy. So here's a hot take for you, kids. I think the Angry Bird movies are good. They're genuinely funny. They got a great story. They got a body positivity message. They're fun. They're incredible. And it's based on the app that you just pull your finger on a slingshot and throw shit at a pig. That's amazing to me that we can take that and make something special out of it. It's kind of cool. And they got a sequel. And you know the sequel ain't as good. But it's it's fine. It's kind of fun. I like it. It's They're good movies. They ain't perfect, but I, I'd watch them right now in a heartbeat over other films, which is kind of cool to say. That being said, I took it upon myself to take that generation or those style of app games where they're instantly recognizable to those who play them. Are they just for iOS? I don't know. I've only ever owned an iPhone in my adult life because I'm young and I'm a person that Ridley Scott would not let watch his movies. So I took, I think, eight of these games or these things on your phone, these app games or whatever the fuck they are. And we're going to, in real time, turn them, not real time, because time is linear, you know, uh, we're going to turn them into uh, movies like a bunch of cool kids do. So obviously Angry Birds is like the most successful of the bunch. Everything after that, it's just kind of playing catch up, which of course it is. Like what else would it be? So, right in that era, too, there was a game called Doodle Jump. Do you guys remember Doodle Jump? You better, because, <laughs> because it all hinges on Doodle Jump. Oh, Doodle Jump. Doodle, 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 jump. Basically, you're like a squid, and you're jumping up. Doodle Jump. So, how do we turn that into a franchise? Good question. This is one where I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it, it's like, I guess you're an alien squid. And you're just living in an alien planet and then you have to like evade things by jumping up. It's like when we did Space Invaders. Space Invaders just like an alien invasion comes down. Doodle Jump's the opposite. You're a, you're an alien invader going up but you have to escape the lava that's crushing your world, I guess. I don't know. Who gives a shit about Doodle Jump? I just had to put it on here because <laughs> it's Doodle Jump. People know it. So that's all I got for Doodle Jump. That moves us over to Flappy Bird, the, the, the game that caused the entire internet to break for a collective second a few years ago. When was Flappy Bird? That had to be like seven years ago now, right? Insane. Basically, you click a bird to make sure it doesn't hit pipes. Here's my idea. I, I love this idea. Here's my idea for Flappy Bird. It's Squid Game, but for birds. <laughs> it's just... It's, in, it's set in the Angry Birds universe. It's on a different island, though. And basically, the island is greeted by these older, you know, just like richer birds. They're like, oh, we can change your like island and give you all this specialty and this nuanced stuff. And you're going to have such a great time. We're going to make everything great for you. But first, you have to enter this game for us. It's called the Flappy Bird Game or whatever. And basically, there's like a bunch of birds that are competing for a chance to win this money. And there's like, we could change the world and we're building all this fun stuff. And it's crazy. And slowly, our lead character, actually, let's say our lead character's name is Flappy. Flappy starts to realize, hey, guess what? I'm getting really pissed off at this game because I keep getting stuck on the same pipe. And now that I'm stuck on the same pipe, nothing is going well for me. I'm angry. I'm losing it. I'm an angry bird, but I'm a flappy angry bird. Nothing is working the way I want it to. All these other birds are doing better than me in the squid game. Why can't I escape this madness? Help me, please. I'm losing my mind. I am flappy and I can't get past this stupid pipe on this game. I keep, I can't get the wing, the wind to speed me up high enough to not hit this pipe. I am getting so angry and frustrated. Help me. <laughs> I love, I love this just because there is this level of toxicity that comes with Flappy Bird. It made everybody mad for a hot minute. 
It did. If it didn't make you mad, you weren't paying attention to Flappy Bird. But anybody who played the game had this rage building inside them. In the same way that the Angry Bird game, you know, like was about birds that are angry because their eggs were stolen and Red was pissed off all the time, our bird here, Flappy, is just pissed off he can't win this thing and he's getting angry and his parents are like, dude, chill the fuck out. It's just a game. <laughs> Nothing bad's going to happen to you. It's all okay, bro. Take a minute. Just take a minute. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So Squid... <laughs> oh, man. Squid Game, but Flappy Bird. <laughs> you just imagine the insanity that would be? Just a big bird waiting at the end and when everybody's trying to fly through the pipes without getting hit, they get shot down. Not like, you know, in like a like a bad sense where they die, but it's just more like... Oh no, somebody put tar on their wings and now they can't play the game properly. Yikes, that sucks. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. I really do love that. And that takes us over to probably like an underrated game, honestly. Fruit Ninja. Are you guys familiar with Fruit Ninja? Where you swipe your finger over fruit and cut it like you're a Fruit Ninja? This one I took some liberties with because it could easily just be... We're a ninja, and our job is to be the chef at this ninja school, and we're, we're angry. It's like Ratatouille, but a ninja. I was like, nah, that's basic and boring. You know me. I'm going to make some random insanity bullshit. You know, if I can make Frogger this game about a socially anxious frog, I can make Fruit Ninja, Sausage Party. <laughs> um, hang on, let me, let me finish. Sausage Party meets, oh my goodness, Westworld? Like, just like the samurai portion. <laughs> like, let me rephrase that. Sausage Party meets Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood. <laughs> yes. Basically, my fruit ninja is like feudal Japan, warring factions, samurais, ninjas, different warriors of all types. But each house is based on a different fruit. And they're all fighting. And there's this one apple who is raised by the bananas to be the ultimate ninja assassin. And he has to kill the leader of the pairs. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns into like this really dark construct of existence like what is life what is meaning am i betraying my people what am i really am i apple am i banana am i the killer of pears what am i that's fruit ninja the movie <laughs> i love it out of everything on my list this is the one i love the most because you just take it so seriously there's not a joke in the movie it's just fruit that talk about how anxiety affects the life of feudal fruit Japan. Just these insane people. You know, you got watermelon dressed up as samurais. You got bananas with nunchucks. Just this insanity of just fruit fighting for no reason. And what does it all mean? Why are these nations feuding? Because they're fruit? Are they trying to plant their seeds across the nation to become the dominant species of fruit? You know, what is going on? And then just one apple that's a ninja that goes around killing all the other fruits. Yes, yes, it's insane and dumb, but that's the movie. That's what this is. Just random, insane chaos, just spewing its nonsense at you. Ah, I love it. I love this idea. And I think it's just hilariously insa insane. If anybody out there wants to do some fan art of this for me, I would appreciate it. Just imagine the Amazing World of Gumball style. A bunch of samurais and ninjas killing each other in the midst of a big war between the watermelon, the pears, and the bananas. And one apple ninja comes in and silently kills the king of the pears, or the ruler of the pears. And, oh, I love it. I love it. I just think it's amazingly insane and creepy and dumb. Ah. <sighs> Sometimes I just surprise myself with my own genius. I really do. I love it. That leads us over to the realm of Talking Tom. Do you guys remember Talking Tom? Basically, there is this cat that would listen to what you say into your microphone on your phone, and then he would repeat it in a high-pitched voice. How do you turn that into a movie? Well, here's what I would do. Do you guys remember the pitch I did for rebooting Snagglepuss. I said, make it like the John Lovitz show, The Critic. Well, my pitch for Talking Tom 
is to do that, but he's a Conan O'Brien type. He's not cynical or depressed. He is polite and nice. He's like, hey, come on to the Talking Tom show where we'll talk to all of our favorite friends. Then you have the side characters like that angry dog comes on the show and that female cat comes on the show. They're all listening to Talking Tom. And basically, he's like the anti-Joe Rogan, just a positive outlook guy that everybody loves and adores. And it's just like listening to this guy in this world struggle with, I don't know, maybe finding love. And maybe he does find love, but he has to be the host of this show. And it's just Talking Tom the show. You know, Conan O'Brien, but Talking Tom. That's my pitch for Talking Tom. Uh, do you remember? I know, I know for a fact that everybody had Talking Tom. Because that was just insane just this cat that would just talk really high pitch and insane and stupid it was funny did 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 i talk about andrew no did i talk about i was gonna say andrew garfield did i talk about chris pratt voicing garfield on this shit before because he is so let's make chris pratt the voice of talking tom just cap just cover all our bases with him and fucking animal cats yes i love it so i i just like the idea maybe it's because i'm so ingrained in like writing and like being part of the entertainment industry that I essentially am just like, yeah, we'll, we'll do anything in there that all my stories kind of eventually lead back to this self-aware parody of a person involved in the industry. But talking to Tom trying to find love while being the host of a talk show. I think that's kind of fun. That leads us to Crossy Roads. Do you guys remember Crossy Roads? You tap a button, your animal hops across the road and it's, it's just Frogger. But I don't want to do Frogger. Instead, <laughs> I'm going to do another Squid Game. That's right, folks. We are only, uh, we're about a halfway into this list. We're crossing over a Flappy Bird. We're, we're, we're building a Squid Game Animal Universe where this is the next level of the game. Flappy wins the game. He gets across the, the pipes. He's on to the next level in a new city where a bunch of new animals are competing against him to cross this really busy road without being killed. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> oh, man. I don't like Squid Game. You know, I've I've watched the show. I didn't connect to it. I don't think it's that great. The only thing I really like about Squid Game is that it's like the most successful show ever on Netflix. That's awesome. Because it should be. It, a Korean show should be the most successful thing on that stupid fucking platform. I really like that idea. I don't really care for Squid Game. I think the message gets lost on a lot of people and they just look at it for, hey, what would I do in this situation? So when you make that into a joke, which I have no doubt in the coming years we're going to see a lot of cartoons and shows parodying the Squid Game thing, I think it could work well. When you have something like Crossy Roads, you obviously get that chicken as one of the lead characters, that anxious chicken. You get all the other animal characters that could show up. I know there's a snail. That would be fun to see. Just the snail that can actually win against people would be pretty dope to experience and be a part of. That would be very fun. Could be exciting to see. I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just completely off base with that. But I would watch the hell out of a, you know, a stupid Crossy Road Squid Game movie. I, I'd see it. I would enjoy it. And that leads us to Candy Crush. I was debating putting Candy Crush on this list just because I don't know what the hell you would do with a Candy Crush movie. It's a game where you flick the thing and it blows up and it does that. And I, I'm not doing another Squid Game because what else would you do? Not much, really. So I was trying to think, Candy Crush, is this something that could be viable? What could it mean? Is it going to be like a Fruit Ninja thing? And then it struck me just as we're recording this, okay, here's what you do with a Candy Crush game. It's like Wreck-It Ralph. Need I say more? Probably. You know, just like there's one guy, it's like this guy who crushes candy all day, and he's just like, why don't people like me? And well, it's because you're crushing candy. So he wants to find a way to make candy, and you kind of become like the candy man. And you just like go from being the bad guy who's crushing candy to the person who is building candy. Just pretty much switching a career path to becoming something that people like. You could get kind of meta with it. This could be the one where you're like, let's go across the ios averse And... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> just literally saying the iOS verse tired me out because I'm like, oh, there's so many fucking multiverses and metaverses. I'd pretty much lose my mind. But 
Mr. Candy Crush himself just wants to be a good guy. He wants to learn to build candy. And this could be like, we have to retrieve the special golden candies in order to become heroes of the candy world. And yeah, that'd be fun. I would watch that. I, I mean, I'm pitching it. So obviously it's something <laughs> or nothing. It exists. And that's pretty impressive for any form of media that it can just exist in our world and be something that we're a part of. So there's Candy Crush. Now, I'm going to end the last two on a very high note, and this might be a shorter episode just because, yeah, I mean, we got time for Christmas. Let's just take a little break and have some fun with this stuff. Temple Run, probably a game here that everyone's familiar with. You, you run in a temple, you, you zip, zap, boom, and back and forth, and this is just begging for a movie, mainly because for two reasons, actually. One, the entire game could just be a sequence in the movie running away from a guy inside of a temple, just sliding down things, broken bridges and everything. Two, Dwayne Johnson is single-handedly bringing back the Jungle franchise, where we see Jumanji, Jungle Cruise, things that take place in a jungle. He's literally bringing them back into prominence, which, okay, I guess so. Why not? <laughs> I mean, it's just Indiana Jones, isn't it? It's just more mysticism. I mean, I think so. I mean, like what theoretically, what else would you do with a temple run? I think it's just you get your explorer, you have like a male version, a female version, you just have them exploring a temple, they trigger something, they have to run through it. Like you could do like a fifteen minute action sequence where they're running away, they're sliding down crevices, they're getting in a mine shaft and a mine cart, and they're just running down things, they're running away from things, they're getting knocked over by trees, all this stuff that's attacking them. And you just throw in whatever the hell Indiana Jones script you have lying around or whatever jungle temple, the mummy bullshit you have lying around. Pretty much all you really need for this one. It's not going to blow your mind or go crazy or be insane or in, in just anything special. That's all it is. Just, you know, running in a jungle over a temple. And that's fine. I, I like some of those movies. They can be very fun sometimes and very enjoyable when they are done right and correctly. Sometimes they aren't done right and correctly, so yeah, they just kind of like lose their momentum a bit, but there is still good stuff in that, and I think Temple Run is probably the most interesting game out of all of these ones. I mean, I like Fruit Ninja a lot, but that can get boring after a while. At least Temple Run, you just can keep busy, and it's enough focus where you can enjoy it and, and just let it wash over you, so that's kind of fun. Now, for my last one, some people might be surprised by this. But I have never actually played this game. This is called Jetpack Joyride. Now, I know what you're thinking. How have you never played this game? I'll tell you why. I was busy playing Talking Tom. <laughs> uh, but I think Jetpack Joyride is self-explanatory. You're just like a down-on-your-luck kid. A million of those movies out there. You find a jetpack and suddenly you're starting to make the world a better place. Part Rocketeer without the Nazis. Part Ron's Gone Wrong without the stupid robot crashing. Just a silly romper with a kid finding a jetpack and going for a joyride. You know, just everything that works about Big Hero 6 and Iron Man. Just fun. Just having fun with a jetpack. You're going for a joyride. You're like, can I be a hero? Can I not be? You know that comic book Jupiter Jet? That's really fun and childish. It could be like that without like all the drama. Don't have that much drama in there. Just a kid with a jetpack. Having fun. Going for a joyride. Just enjoying his time in this world. That's all you need, baby. That's all you'd ever really want, isn't it? Just having a good time and enjoying yourself for the craziness that's the world around you. I can't believe I never played this. It's insane to me, actually. It's like, yeah, just up and down jetpack stuff. You turn that to a story, you just get a heartfelt kid. It works. Live action or animated. I personally think all of these should be animated because I don't really want to see a live action crossy roads with birds killing themselves. But I guess you could do a live action one. It could be a franchise. Out of everything on this list, I think the franchise is Fruit Ninja, Talking Tom, and uh, Temple Run. But yeah, Jetpack Joyride could definitely be a franchise. It could be something very fun. And all of these have the making to be the next Angry Birds movie. Was this a fun topic? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I did it anyways. And like doing stuff anyways, I'm going to end this video by giving you guys a couple recommendations for things you should check out. 
So first off, House of Gucci looks really good. I think we should all go check that out and support that creativity. I just mean, what's the most recent thing that Jonah Hill has done? I really liked War Dogs. He was really good in War Dogs. So check out War Dogs. That would be a very fun one. Uh, Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi trilogy looks to be like one that people should catch up on because it's probably going to play a prominent role. And the Angry Bird movies are very good. They are very fascinating, very strong, very endearing. I think a lot of people will enjoy those. And that is going to do it for this episode of The Geek Wave. A little bit shorter, but don't forget, Christmas is just around the corner. And maybe we'll do something for Christmas. But if we don't, don't worry. It's just things happening. You don't have to hold on to anything with sincerity. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of The Geek Wave. If you have any topics or ideas you'd like to hear me talk about on this, please leave them in the comment section below or, you know, email me them. The email will be in the description if you're listening to this on the podcast feed. Give us a rating and a like over there. As always, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. do 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 do